earth be thrown and kingdoms fall. When men who hear refuse to pray on rocks and hills and mountains call. God's love so sure shall still endure. Sister Downs and Sister Baptiste for the reminder of how powerful the love of God is. Tomorrow is a big day for the church. You know that. I know Sister Cyrus knows that very well. Tomorrow is work day. Spring work day. Cleaning day. And all are invited to be out in our numbers 
with our buckets and our brushes. We are going to be cleaning windows, washing windows. We are going to be scrubbing benches and tidying up and dressing up the house of the Lord so that the house of the Lord will look better than our homes. Amen? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And then we will continue calling on all the men to be here on the fort. That is what my building man tells me. Because we will be changing lights, bulbs, bulbs I should say. Because if you look up, you would realize that we are going blind, dark, no light. And so we are planning to change the bulbs on June the 4th. And we are asking for able-bodied men who can climb to come out and to participate in that project. We are not discriminating against the women because we do know that some sisters can climb better than some men. Amen. So if you feel that you can go on the scaffold as a sister, you are also welcome to be in attendance as we will try to add some more light to the church. The subject for discussion today printed in our bulletin, God's promise to the overcomers. The text that was read by Brother Enoch is found in Revelation chapter 21 and the single verse is verse 7. And the Bible says, he who overcomes shall inherit all things, not some things, but all things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Shall we pray? Our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessings of the past week and for the opportunity to come before you in worship on another Sabbath day. Forgive us of our sins, Heavenly Father, and speak now to our hearts the peace of your commandments. And may we receive a special blessing from our worship experience with you. And may we be mindful to give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory that is due to your name. And your name alone, as you now guide us through this message, is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. In the book of Revelation, John wrote seven letters to the seven churches. John revealed some wonderful promise to the overcomers in these letters. The seven churches described in Revelation chapter 2 through to Revelation chapter 3 were seven literal churches at the time that John the Apostle wrote the book of Revelation. Though they were literal churches in that time, there is also spiritual significance for the churches and believers then when John wrote and for the churches and believers today. The first purpose, listen to me, the first purpose of the letters to the churches was to communicate with the churches and meet their spiritual needs at that time. 
the second purpose is to reveal seven different types of individual churches throughout history and instruct them in God's truth. John is told by God as he received the vision, write the things which thou hast seen and the things which are and the things which shall be hereafter. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 19. This message reveals that John had seen the events described in the visions. As the visions passed before John on the Isle of Patmos, John wrote, which thou hast seen, the scripture says, it reveals that the vision had application for his time, which you are now seeing, the things which are. And it also reveals that the vision had application for the future, things which shall be hereafter. Not only what you are seeing now, that the vision is applicable for, but what should come Hereafter, the common message to the churches is one of conflict and confrontation with ends with a promise of hope. If you take time out to read the letters John wrote to the seven churches, you will discover that in writing to the seven churches, John is talking about conflict. He's talking about confrontation. But the good thing about the seven letters of conflict and confrontation is that the seven letters ends with a promise of hope. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The seven letters ends with to him who overcomes to him who overcomes, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 7. John continues, to him who overcomes will not be hurt at all by the second death. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 11. He continues, to him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna. I will also give him a white stone with a new name written on it, known only to him who receives it. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 7. To him who overcomes and does my will to the end, I will give authority over the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He will dash them to pieces like pottery. Just as I have received authority from the Father, I will also give him the morning star. Revelation chapter 2 verse 26 and 28. To him who overcomes shall be dressed in white garments and I will never blot his name from the book of life but I will confess his name before my father and before the angels. John didn't stop here amidst the conflict and confrontation in the seven letters that John wrote to the churches. John said, to him who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. And he shall go out no more. And I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God. The new Jerusalem which comes down out of heaven from God. And I will write on him my new name all the letters of conflict and confrontation ends with the hope of the overcomer amidst the conflict and confrontation when you become an overcomer the bible says that you will inherit all things 
all these wonderful promises are all different ways of describing the divine blessedness the overcomer will experience. You see, you must be an overcomer to experience all these things. He will reign with Christ in his kingdom and ultimately inherit a world free of sin and disease. I need that world to come. A world that is free of sin and disease. The Bible tells us that the overcomer, God himself will dwell in their midst. There will be his, there will be his people and God himself will be with them and God will be their God. And the Bible tells us for the overcomers, he will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, nor mourning, nor cry, nor pain for the former things would have passed away. But only the overcomers will inherit these things. The overcomer, the Greek word most often translate overcomer, comes from the word Nike. If you were to pronounce it in English, you would say Nike, N-I-K-E. But from the Hebrew word, it is Nike, which according to Strong's concordance means to carry off the victory. The verb implies a battle. For you to be an overcomer, you must be involved in a battle. The Bible teaches us to recognize that the world is a battleground and not a playground. Two different arenas. A battleground is not somewhere where you play. When I want to play, I take Andrew down to the park that is close to us and we play. He's, an, he's enjoying himself. There is no confrontation or conflict. But in a battlefield, there is conflict and confrontation. That is the world that we live in. Not a playground. It is a battlefield. The definition of overcomer can be best understood. In the light of what Jesus says. For whatever Jesus says is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world or faith. Who is he who overcomes the world but he who believes that Jesus Christ is the son of God. Or faith. Helps us to be overcomers. And we must believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. And the scripture says that faith is believing. Because that he who comes to him must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. So we come to Jesus. And we believe that Jesus is. We exercise our faith in him. Believing. That Jesus is God. And that Jesus can do for you and for me. Far more. Than we can do. Or ask of him. And so the Bible tells us. That it is our faith. That helps us. To overcome. Faith, those who overcome do so by trusting in Jesus Christ and his sacrifice, remaining unwavering in their faith, even when faced with death. Because he who comes to him must believe that he is. 
that he is a reward of them who daily diligently seek him therefore when we come to God for us to overcome in faith we must trust God we must take him at his word we must take him at his word even when we are faced with death the Bible tells us and they overcame him by the blood and him here is the devil him here is Satan or adversary who is like a roaring lion walking about seeking to devour us the Bible tells us and they overcome him that old rascal the devil by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they did not love their lives to death Overcoming by the blood of the Lamb. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. The blood shall never, never lose its power. And by their testimony. Are you hearing me? And the Bible tells us that they were not afraid to die because they love Jesus more than life. That is a place that you and I need to reach in our. In our, in our Christian experience to truly be an overcomer we must love Jesus more such was the fate of Peter, James and John such was the fate of Jesus Christ himself such was the faith of us and Jerome. Such was the faith of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Who stood up and said, but if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. If God refuse to deliver us, then we will die with our faith. In God. We will die believing that we will be resurrected and as an overcomer we will live again. To overcome this world, to overcome in this world is not an easy work. It is not an easy task. Because it requires us to truly believe what Jesus says he will do through us. He will do. And to follow him faithfully to the end. We need to keep that faith and belief intact. In spite. Yes, Brother Bellum, in spite of trials and temptations in this world. Because trials and temptation will come. This is hard enough in normal times. The pressures of the world being what they are. When the pressures of this world is intensified, many are they who will fall away from the faith. Like the seed that sprouts up quickly but has no root and quickly dies. We have seen so many around us who once walked with us and walk no more. Under intense pressure of the world, they have left the church. They have given up on their faith. I say to you hold on to Jesus the Bible tells us he is the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before
before him, endure the cross, despising his shame. And he sat down at the right hand of his father. You see, for us to be an overcomer, it is not only faith alone that we need, but we need the spirit of God. Zechariah tells us in Zechariah 4 and verse 6, it is not by might nor by power, but by the spirit of almighty God. We need the spirit of God in us to go along with our faith, persecution and trouble. The worries of this world and deceptiveness of wealth and fame have, have led many to abandon their good intention, their one spiritual walk with Jesus and eventually their faith. Sometimes all it takes to overcome temptation is to stand firm and refuse to be dragged into it. To stand firm and the only thing that can help you to stand firm is the spirit of God within you. Without the spirit of God, you and I cannot resist the devil. The Bible says resist the devil and he will flee from you. And overcomer is one who resists sin no matter what laws Satan uses. But for you to do that, the spirit of God must be in you. No matter the tactics that Satan may use. To invite you, to tempt you, it is only the Spirit of God that can help you to say, get thee behind me, Satan. It is written, Jesus demonstrated this in the book of St. Matthew chapter 4 when the Bible tells us in verse 1 that he was led into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil and because he was filled with the spirit according to St. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 1 the Bible says Jesus stood up and he said to the devil get thee behind me Satan it is written he could only do that because he was filled with the spirit of God. We need to have the spirit of God in us. You see to overcome we need to continue doing all the good things we know we should do. The things the Bible and the spirit tells us to do. Keep reading and studying the Bible daily. Keep praying constantly keep abiding in the love of Jesus Christ quickly as I rush to the end of this message to be an overcomer we need faith to be an overcomer we need the spirit of God because John says only the overcomers will inherit all things. I submit to you to be an overcomer. We need endurance. Overcoming is often equated with endurance. Jesus encouraged those who follow him to endure to the end. In St. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 13, the Bible says, But he who endures to the end shall be saved. It means because the world is not a playground but a battlefield and the world is filled with conflicts and, and confrontation. You will be up against it and the scripture tells us that only those who endure to the end shall be saved which implies that some of us will not endure to the end. Some of us will give up by somebody just stepping on your little toe. Yes. Some of us will give up 
when sickness comes and you have prayed long and long and long and hard and it seems as if there is no deliverance. Some of us will give up when a wife turn her back on you or a husband may turn his back on you. Some of us will give up when you lose a job. Some persons will give up with the death of a spouse or a child. But Jesus says those who endure to the end shall be saved. He talks about endurance to the end. A true disciple of Jesus who is one who endures through fiery trials by the power of the Holy Spirit. You see, some of us give up because some person is not talking to them. But a true disciple of Jesus Christ will endure to what is called fiery trials. The Bible tells us that when we go through fiery trials, what we should do, what we should do, we should hold on to Jesus. When we go through fiery trials, listen to me brothers and sisters in Christ, visiting friends. When we go through fiery trials and overcome a clings to Christ no matter how high the cost of discipleship is. So when you are going through fiery trials, that is the time you need to draw a little closer to Christ. You need to cling to Christ. Not to give up, not to run away. The Apostle Paul wrote eloquently of overcoming. He summarizes the power believers have through the Holy Spirit to overcome any attacks of the enemy. So you see, the Lord has given us the power to overcome all the attacks of the enemy. Paul says that God. God does not leave us defenseless. Are you hearing me? To face the evil one alone and the fiery darts of the evil one. Paul says we must put on the old armor of God. He says put on the old armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles or the fiery darts of the devil. As we approach the end of time, the devil will intensify his attack on God's people, on God's church. When the pressure comes on, you know that you're living right and you know that you're in the end of time. He's trying to get you. And so Paul says we must put on the whole armor of God. So that we may be able to stand the fiery darts of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, Paul says. But against principalities and powers. Against the rulers of the darkness of this age. Against spiritual hosts of wickedness in, high, in heavenly places. Therefore take up the whole armor of God. And you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand. Stand therefore having girded your way with truth having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel above all take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God and all of that when you put it on Paul says stand Stand to be an overcomer. Stand. He said, hold firm. Pray in all ways with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Paul says, be watchful to the end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And when you have done all of this, Stand, he said, and you will be counted as an overcomer. God bless you.